Ryan contributed to this plan. He's on Capitol Hill and he joins us this morning. Thanks for being with us, Congressman. Hey, you bet. Nice to be with you, Karen. So just to give people a broad overview of some of the highlights, you guys have broken this down into five parts. Mm. Jobs, which mm. obviously very important to many. Spending, health care, mm. government reform, and national security. What are the priorities? If the GOP takes control of the House after these midterms, what would be first on the plate for you? Well, first of all, this is a governing agenda we could put in place right now is what we're suggesting. But number one, job creation. Do what you need to do to remove the uncertainty that government is imposing on the economy to get jobs growing. Control and cut spending and clean up the way Congress works. I mean, you have, you have people around here voting for thousand plus page bills that they haven't even read. We've got to clean this up and restore trust and accountability to the way Congress works. Um, and that's what we're saying. We're saying we're not trying to reinvent the country. We're trying to reclaim it by reapplying those timeless founding principles like government by consent of the governed that made us such an exceptional country in the first place. So you offer outlines here, but is there specific mm -hmm. legislation that has been drafted that you're ready to go with? Are there bills? Well, sure. So we're not trying to put a new party platform or a big long-term agenda or, or like the contract where we have a whole list of bills, but behind each one of these policies, yes, indeed, there is legislation that can enact it. For instance, the spending cuts, we've already put out legislation that totals $1.3 trillion in spending cuts that we could enact right now if we could, if, we, if for instance, we got control of Congress. So yes, behind all of these policy initiatives are legislation that we think are the first steps we need to take to get this country back on the right path. Now, for a few years, you've actually personally uh, pushed the idea of mm -hmm. at least a partial privatization of Social Security, but mm -hmm. that didn't make it into this pledge. Why not? Well, again, this isn't an exhaustive pledge. These are the initial first steps we need to get the country back on track. And I did not, I, I would argue that I'm not proposing to privatize Social Security. My plan, which is something that I myself wrote as a consensus of one person, me, says if you're 55 and above, we're going to protect your Social Security benefits as they're designed today. But for people like you and I, Kieran, who are below 54, who don't have Social Security coming to us because it's going bankrupt, give us an opportunity of having a plan like I have as a congressman, like every federal worker where the government, Social Security, invests a portion of our payroll taxes in an account in our name so we can grow our money better and have a better retirement benefit that's safe and secure, not privatized, but harnessing the power of compound interest so that we can have a better benefit. It's just a voluntary choice and option that I personally have proposed, but this is not an exhaustive list. This is basically the key first steps we need to take. Right to get this country back on track. No, I understand that, but one of the <clears throat> big, big uh, problems for us all and the reason why we are facing, uh, you know, these, <clears throat> these massive, massive debts and deficits in, in the future is because of the entitlement programs. There wasn't a lot mm -hmm. specifically addressing entitlement programs in this. Why? Well, there is a, there is a discussion then on the need to fix the entitlement problem. Right. The other, the other thing we have to recognize in this document is we, if we do get the majority, we're coming into what we call a divided government situation. So we don't want to put something out there making all of these promises that we know we can't keep because President Obama is the president. So we have to recognize that we're going into, if we get the majority, an era of divided government. And so we want to talk about deliverables. We want to talk about aspirations and the key first steps we need to take to get this country back on track. That's why we're talking about cutting and controlling spending, preventing big tax increases, which will cost us jobs and slow down the economy and just cleaning up the mess that has become the way Congress operates itself these days. No, I know. When you talk about the deficit, though, it just seems that, uh, you know, it, the numbers just don't add up, and, and that's not they're, just they're for amazing. your party. But, you know, oh. you talk about $100 billion savings in, by rolling back <clears throat> some government spending. You specifically, I think, talked about the Department of Transportation, perhaps the EPA here. But then you're also talking about extending the Bush tax cuts for everybody. So how do you do that with no new revenue coming sure. in and not so, a lot of cutting? The best thing we can do to improve our budget situation is to grow the economy and create jobs and cut and control spending. That's why that's the cornerstone of this Pledge to America. Raising taxes, as is being proposed this January, on successful small businesses, raising tax rates on half of all small business income, which is where 70% of our jobs come from, will slow down our economy, cost us about 1.2 million jobs, according to the Congressional Budget Office, and actually worsen our budget outlook. So the idea here is not to raise taxes because that slows down the economy and creates job loss. The idea here is get this economy growing and control spending. Those are the best two combinations to get our fiscal situation improved. We are in such a huge deficit and debt hole. Yes, Kieran, obviously we've got to deal with entitlements. That's something we're going to have to come to consensus on around here and move forward. But in this divided government situation we find ourselves in, these are what we think are the immediate first steps we could do right away to get this country on the right path.
Well, we want to thank you for joining us and presenting your uh, point of view. We're also going to link it up with our website so people can read all uh, 21 pages and, and judge for right. themselves as well if it's ideas that they like. Uh, Congressman Paul Ryan out of Wisconsin, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Karen.